Hey everybody, welcome to the round five play ratings video. If you are new here, welcome to your first play ratings video. I don't know if you'd be watching this for the first time, if this would be your first play ratings video, but if it is, uh, it's going to be, uh, it's not going to be as positive, obviously, it's going to be a lot more of a, a home truth session just to top off the therapy after our disappointing loss to Port Adelaide in round five of the 2021 AFL season. Basically, what I like to do here is I like to start the conversation uh, and just give players a, a score out of 10 pursuant to their role on the team, context to their personal situation uh, and how they executed their role and um, basically, you in the comments, if you feel like there needs to be any adjustments made, you just write a comment with, you know, you make the case for or against, or if you think a rating should be higher or lower. And then I've got a, uh, a table that I will formulate, I have formulated, and then we will keep track of these ratings until the end of the season and then crown our, our champion. So um, for those of you who have seen a play ratings video, welcome, welcome back. Let's begin because it was a fucking shit show. Let's be honest. It was an absolute shit show. And in a funny way, as I finished these ratings, there were a few little positives. Thank goodness. It wasn't a complete disaster because there were some people that actually made us smile and made us proud. So let's get on with it. First up, it's the back line, Doherty, Wiedering, and Plowman. Doherty, I, I actually didn't mind Doherty's game. He um, did what he needed to do as skipper. There were a few you know, errant kicks, but for the most part, in the moments when he needed to stand up, I thought out of the two captains, he definitely led the way. Um, 25 touches, eight marks, uh, you know, 451 meters gain. He used the ball <clears throat> relatively well, 76%. Anything above 75 is pretty good. Uh, so uh, I found a way to give him a seven for his game. Weedering was much the same. Played on Dixon. Um, Dixon kicks two. That's kind of as much as you want to be giving up to an opposition key forward. And Dixon hadn't kicked a goal in two weeks. So he's a good player. You know, he is a very good player. And it was a good good test for Weeders because he didn't play on Dixon last year. They played Liam Jones on, on Charlie Dixon. So um, I thought he battled well. He even got, he copped a really, really bad hit, which I thought, I mean, I thought he was concussed, to be honest, from, you know, level two where I was sitting. Uh, but he came back on, he gripped the teeth. And therefore, I think he should get some, some credit for that. So I gave him a seven. Plowman, I gave, it's hard, really hard, really, really hard. <laughs> a really, really hard one to rate. I think he did his job. I think he did his job. I think he was good enough to say he did his job. I gave him a six for his game. Um, there's like a gut feeling within me that says not to give him a six. But at the end of the day, that's, that's what my overall feeling was. I think he just did his job. It could be a five, but you know, he contested well. He took some intercept marks at crucial stages. Um, it's just hard when you've lost the way you've lost and your defense has conceded the way it has. And he did concede some passages of play which were pretty poor at, in those moments, but he did make up for them in other moments. So I won't harp on too much about him. I gave it a six. I'll let you guys talk about that. Next up, Willow, Jones, and Saad. Willow gave him a three. I thought it was his chance to stake his claim. Um, I thought his first contest was pretty good. Then he had this passage of play, which is probably why he was dropped in the first place. He wanted to switch the ball, but he decided that he would run and gallop and bounce. And my theory is the ball moves quicker than the human. So if you're going to switch the play, kick the fucking thing. I don't know, just poor decision making. Um, I feel for him because I know he's got the, the hunger and desire in him, but now he's in a point where it's he's lost his confidence and I don't know. I didn't think he did his job last night, so I, I thought he was pretty poor. Um, so I gave him a three. Jones, I thought he didn't do his job last night. Uh, I gave him a four, and I feel like I'm contradicting myself because I've given Plowman a six. I don't know. I just My gut feeling says Jones was a four. He didn't intercept the way that we have come to see him intercept. He actually had to be accountable last night, uh, as opposed to the previous two weeks where he was a little bit more loose. Didn't win enough for the ball um, for an attacking defender. Didn't I didn't feel like he necessarily stopped, you know, enough play coming, you know, into our defensive fifty. And I just I base it off how much better he has played and, and, and can play and, and does play. So I found I, I felt like it was a four, but again, we'll, we'll we'll you know chat about that in the comments and see what you think. Saad, I also gave a four. Just, you know, I get it, he's proppy and, and whatnot, but uh, last night he I just didn't think he did his job. 
So it was just, it's really just as simple as that and as blunt as that. So it's a four. Next up, it's Cottrell, Cripps and Noons. Cottrell, I gave him a pass mark. I thought he battled willingly, did his job. Uh, it might be a little light on him as well. He's had the 12 touches and a goal. I just want more from a guy that's playing on the wing. So did his job, gave him a five. Cripps, this is probably one I want to spend some time on. It's just, I mean, I gave him a six, right? So he's had, what is it? 27 touches at 77%. And when I saw his disposal efficiency was 77%, I couldn't believe it. I thought he butchered the ball last night from the eye test. And maybe it was the disposals that were not effective or were ineffective. They're the ones that really stick in the memory. And maybe I am being a bit harsh, but for me, it all just comes down to that set shot miss in the first quarter. I mean... I think there's a bit of an elephant in the room with Cripps. And uh, I spoke to some some people last night at the function. And Are we really paying him a million dollars? Is that is that what's going to happen? Is that what this football club's doing now? He, he's going to be a, a $1 million a season player. Because if that's the case, we're in trouble. <laughs> we're in big trouble. He looks devoid of a soul. He, I can't believe I'm saying this about Patrick Cripps. He gave up last night at certain points. When it didn't go his way and he, you know, there was a turnover or whatever it was, there was no quick reaction to chase and impact the next the next effort. Like he made his name on his second, third, fourth relentless efforts. And oh, I thought he bottled it last night, um, which is hard because he's won a lot of the ball, been tough in the contest at certain stages, but it's captain moments, leadership moments that matter for him at the moment. I mean, I've given him a six for his game. I think he has done his job technically, but missing that set shot is is, is fucking brutal, brutal. And as a, as a fan, you know, we watch the games, you know, you know, if he's missing that, we're not winning the game. You get that sense within you. You just know. And he's got to, he's got to decide what he wants to do. Is he staying? Is he going? Because if he's going, we need to we need to move on. And if he's staying, fantastic. We also need to move on and, and develop him and get him better. There's another there's another harsh reality to Patrick Cripps. I'll give you a couple. Number one, he hasn't improved as a footballer. There's been no development. He hasn't improved as a leader, but that's okay because he's in his second year, so that, I mean, he's going to take some more time to become a better leader. And number three, we have hyped him up to the point where. I feel like it's a, like a like a, a complacency within him now. Like, oh, you know, he's tried so hard and he's carried the club on his back. Shut up. Hang on a minute. It's his job. I feel like I feel like he's he's a contested bull by default. You know when you played basketball when you were like 14 and there was the kid that was just a little bit more developed than everybody else and he was just bigger than everybody else and they usually played you know the center position and then you got to under 20s and then everyone else grew up and then that player didn't look as good i feel like that's kind of the territory we're going with with Kripa because I, I haven't seen improvement in his skill i really haven't um he tries to do too much holds onto the ball too long and we've allowed it in a way the media the hype we, we've allowed this to happen we've put this we've put this crown on him and uh don't get me wrong he was fantastic in in 16 17 it's hard i mean was was he just a standout player in a really really poor side and and therefore looked a lot better because everybody else around him was just nowhere near his level i don't know but after watching that performance last night from the captain of the carlton football club what do you say you know and and i love i love patrick cripps and um you know want to see him happy and, and all of that, but let's let's be serious. I think a lot of people will turn to Mark Murphy and they'll turn to Eddie Betts and Levi Casbold and, and these guys. I think we need to start with the captain. Like enough is enough. He's got to get better. He has to be better, period. This isn't about competing. This is about winning or losing. We're losing games against the quality sides. We, we, are, we are falling very short and our leaders lead the way. I mean, we're going to get to Noons next. There was a passage of play where Noons kind of just got walked around by Rosie. And yeah, you can say, oh, well, he didn't give effort. But when Cripps is giving up on on passages of play, what the fuck do you expect anyone else to do? 
So is, is anybody going to walk into that change room, look him in the eye and say, fucking smarten up because you're the captain, mate. You're the fucking leader. He's, it's, 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 it hurts. It hurts to watch him and his body language, you know? And is it a little too hard for him? I'm just over the Messiah complex with him. The, the we, we give him excuses for everything. Oh, he's banged up. Oh, he's done so much. He's 26 years old. I didn't see any of these excuses when Mark Murphy was captain. No, we wanted to lay into him. We still do it today. We fucking eat him alive. I guarantee you Mark Murphy kicks that set shot from 20 meters out directly in front when he's captain. You know? I love Cripps. I want him to get better. He needs to improve. He needs to he needs to improve. And it's all good to pick up Caleb Sarong and, and be a bully to Caleb Sarong. But when you come up against an actual side of men, you, you get exposed. And I thought he got exposed last night. So anyway, um, I need more. I need more from, from the captain. And that's just truth. You know, nothing personal. Love him, but need more. Come on. Noons, I gave him a pass mark. That contest in the fourth quarter where he gave up. That, that You know why that hurts? Because Noons is the guy that doesn't do that. Noons is the job doer, the, the guy that doesn't play with the entitlement. But, you know, there was a lot of uh, the acceptance of the mediocrity last night by the players. There was an acceptance that we just weren't good enough last night. It was a little bit too hard. And, I mean, he's kicked a goal. He's kind of done his job from a statistical point of view. And he's battled and he's done all of that. He's had the 16 touches, the eight marks. He's, he's run and covered a lot of ground. He's spread well. He's kicked a goal. So, you know, all ticks there. Um, but... You know, it was a bit play. I gave him a five. I feel like it probably should be a six. I'm going to change that to a six. Again, you guys let me know what you think in the comments, but just another so-so game. Next up, it's Fogarty, McGovern, and Walsh. Fogarty, I thought he was pretty solid last night. Did his job, 18 touches. Um, went in hard. We needed to go in hard. Kicked a goal. Um, you know, five marks, four tackles. Did his thing. I gave him a seven. McGovern, I actually gave McGovern a pass mark. It's, it's you know, given, let's put some context around Mitch McGovern's situation. At the end of the day, he starts his season in round five. Everybody else has had a month of footy under their belt, you know? So um, he's, you know, always going to be a little bit behind the eight ball in that regard. I thought he looked lively at times. I thought he was far from our worst. I think he's only going to get better. He actually moved pretty, pretty well, you know? <laughs> You know, some of the balls that were coming towards him and any forward were were poor. He had some poor moments as well. Don't get me wrong, but um, you know the fact that he went behind the ball probably goes to show the what happened with the coach's box and how they saw his role. So, is that something we're going to pursue with David Teague in his press conference? Spoke a little bit about it. It seems like they're more open to the idea of 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 it. So maybe there's a change up on the horizon. He's a beautiful kick of the football. Um, I think he reads the play well. Maybe putting him behind the ball is the move, but. It just feels like a loss if that's the case because he's being brought over as a forward. So we'll see how it goes. So yeah, gave him a pass mark for his game. I think he'll build into the season. Walshy, one of the only shiny lights on the night. He's, uh, you know, we're blessed to have him. We really are. I, I gave him a nine, probably because of how shit ass the rest of the team was. But um, my hope with Walsh is we don't have the same thing that happened to Mark Murphy and Patrick Cripps happened to Walsh. You know, the young kid, gun, top 10, 15 players in the competition that they rise to become, and then they just get consumed by the soulless, lifeless, losing stain that the football club has. I just hope that he, you know... It's hard because I, I, I asked the question last night, like, who motivates Sam Walsh in this team to be better? And I felt like the answer was... Sam Walsh and uh, he's self-motivated and self-driven and it's going to take something and someone really special to lead this club out of the rut that we find ourselves in and he seems to be he was probably one of the few that you know didn't accept what was happening and kept going and uh, I want to give him the full credit for that so gave him a nine next up Eddie Betts Mackay and Casper Eddie Betts um, look, I thought, I mean, he, he wanted enough of the ball last night, Six, uh, 12 touches, unfortunately didn't put a score on the board, which is definitely what we need from him as a small forward. Um, had he kicked one or two, it's probably looking at a seven or an eight, but I gave him, I gave him just a pass mark. I don't know if I'm being 
a bit nice to him. It, I think with losses like this, it compounds the pressure on an older guy like an Eddie Betts because it's like, oh, we're losing against these good sides. Where are we going? Why are we playing the older guys? But I thought he was far from our worst last night. Um, the pressure was there. It was, you know, it's a hard one. I gave him a five. I'll let you guys discuss that. Next up is Harry. I gave Harry a, I gave Harry a, a four. He's had five kicks, five marks, kick one goal, two, just not good enough um, from our key forward. He's had a pretty good month of, of the season. Um, it wasn't a good game last night. It's part of his journey, part of his development. You can't always be great. Um, you know, he's had a lot of shots on goal against Frio. Last week, he has four shots on goal, two goals, two. Last night, one goal, two. So gave him a four below a pass mark. And I think he, he would definitely know he can play better. And I hope that we can... I mean, I was hoping that with Mitch in the team, it would help Harry, but it wasn't to be. So it is what it is. Gave him a four. Levi, you know what? Did he did his job. You know, had, had you know, we really needed him to hit the scoreboard and, and really do something. And I think that was his best game of the season. I think he's got a lot more improvement to come. His first, I think it was the, his first shot on goal, kicked it out in the full. Oh my God. Oh my God. It just had signs of Collingwood written all over it with that kick that he kicked in the first quarter, which was a shank. So it started off pretty poorly, but from that moment on, I thought he worked pretty well into the game, provided a chop out, threw his weight around. Um, I thought he did his job. I, you know, he was far from our worst. I actually gave him a, a seven. Um, you know, He's limited in his mobility and he looks a little bit like he lumbers at times, but you can't fault him last. I couldn't fault him last night. I thought he did a pretty good job. Next up, it's Pitonet, Kerno, and Williams. Pitonet, okay. First of all, love him. Love the way he competes. I gave him a seven for his game. What a fucking indictment on this football club that he was in a. He was in a. I don't know if you guys saw it on the TV, but at the ground, he was engaged in a wrestle with Scott Lysette for. I'm not exaggerating. At least ninety seconds. They were wrestling for 90 seconds. They wouldn't get off each other. It was a headlock, a knee lock. Not one fucking Carlton player came to fly the flag. What a what a weak group of individuals, honestly. And he comes out there and competes every week. And that's the kind of respect he gets back from his teammates. It really goes, it actually says a lot about this group. When things don't go their way, they go into their shell and they worry about themselves because they just don't want the heat. It was pathetic what his teammates did to him. And I don't I don't blame him if he, he starts dropping his effort next week because he knows his teammates don't have his back. What a fucking indictment that is on this football, on this team. It's a joke. It is a joke. The rest of them want to run around and give up on contests while this guy wants to actually, you know, fly the flag and show some spirit. I thought it was very poor of his teammates, but I don't want to take away anything from Pitto. I gave him a seven for his game. Just can't believe that happened. It was it, that that hurt as a supporter. That hurt to watch, you know. Um, but I do love the way he goes about it. Kerno again, not the best night, but he finds a way to get the minimum standard done, doesn't he? He tagged Boke. Um, Boke still had twenty nine because Boke's a champion. Um, Ed's had eighteen touches. Uh, yeah, eighteen touches. He, Seven tackles. It just, you know, didn't. Yeah. Don't think he. I mean, I gave him a five for his game, but a lot of improvement needed there. It was a so so game, and that's kind of why it's a five. Zach Williams need more. Gave him a four. Simple as that. I get it. He was his first game back. He's he was you know didn't have much of a preparation for last week. Then he was a laid out anyway. Is he banged up? Is he sore? Is this just the story of Zach Williams? He's always kind of been a banged up player, even at the Giants. Um, but the marquee signing, I feel we're going through this again, are we? Fantastic. We're doing it again. We're talking about marquee signings not performing. Anyway, we need more from Zach, and I hope he can improve. I gave him a four. Uh, the interchange was Mark Murphy, Samo, Kennedy, and Gibbons. Murph, I gave him a pass mark. Far from our worst. Um, I thought um, at times when it was time for him to crack in and, and hit a tackle, he did. And I know that that's been something that a lot of the supporters are really looking for from him. Um, and a game like last night, the guy playing in Mark Murphy's role, it's hard to really impact when you have a game like last night. But look, he's had 15 touches, so he's found a way to win the ball. 
and uh, that's kind of where it's going to be for him in terms of where he plays because people aren't looking to give him the ball. He's not getting the ball kicked to him, so he has to work hard to get it. And I thought with seven marks, it showed his ability to spread, provide an option, and it was really based around his work rate last night. I thought his work rate was excellent, and he actually looked a lot more better in the legs than what he did in round one. If you remember my player ratings, he just looked really slow and and whatnot. Whereas last night I saw the, you, you, you can tell when someone's really trying and I thought he really put the effort into his sprint efforts and whatnot. So, I mean, I gave him a five for his game. Uh, the next bloke, Samo. Fuck. Um, what do you say? Um, speaking of Murph, there was a passage of play. It might've been the third it was a 20 meter kick, if that, to Murph. It needed to be a little low. Samo just loops this thing over to him. Hospital ball to Murphy. Murphy gets crunched. Um, that wasn't the only one. There was an absolute nightmare where he just kicked it. Lazy kick. Lazy kick. Didn't put his foot through it. Turned it over to Port Adelaide in our defensive 50. Look, it wasn't a good game from Samo. He's had 11 touches. Just wasn't a good game from him. Uh, probably his worst game of the season. I gave him a three for his game. Needs to be better. He has come off two really solid weeks, but last night we didn't get that spark and that energy from Samo that we need, and therefore I gave him a three. Kennedy, well, I hope you all enjoyed your Kennedy experiment because that's kind of what it is. That's where it is. He's neither here, neither there. He's uh, Someone made a, a comment to me yesterday. I think it was Paul Sebastiani about one and a half players. In the twos, absolutely at the level. Get to the ones, um, not so much. Did he battle? Yes. Did he give effort? Yes. At times, yes. Did he take a strong contested mark? Yes. But yeah, it's just a so-so performance. I gave him a four for his game. I couldn't give him a pass mark. Gibbons, I gave a pass mark as well. Just um, wasn't at his best. I don't, you know, last week he was, last two weeks, actually most of the season he's been really good. So it wasn't his best game, but it wasn't his worst. 18 touches and he's kicked it behind. He's gone at 55%. His disposal really let, let him down. I toyed with giving him a four, but I thought his effort and his application was there enough to warrant a five. So I gave him a bare pass mark and that's kind of where it's at. Those are the player ratings, as I said before. They're not they're not right. They're not wrong. We're just It's really just about getting the discussion week to week as to where we as fans feel the players are. And it doesn't mean much or anything, but um, you know, for us to get over these games, especially these bad losses, it's part of the therapy and... You know, I learn a lot more about the game from you guys in the comments. So feel free to share your thoughts about some of these and, and maybe even give your own ratings for some, if not all of them. And yeah, we fight to live another day. Have a great one, guys. Chat to you next week. Go the Mighty Blues.